So actually this entire workflow, it's divided into two parts. One is my chat agent. Another one is my vector retrieving agent. So how it actually works. So when you click on chat, uh, tell me about Emily Clark. I say it will give you what workflow it follows. So it uses memory. It's using its open AI chat model, which I'm going to explain next. So Emily is a teacher who is specialized in English lecture. This is coming from my super base document, which I uploaded. Where is that? So you go to storage. There is a N8 and test bucket where I uploaded this dummy data. Actually, if you see this document, I'm going to show you. So what I do? So I search for Emily, right? So here's Emily. So and this is it's about. So it's same as what we got in the chat. So what it do? It reading this document using the embeddings. And then giving us data that we're gonna do. Let's see how. That's that's how chat works. So it's what it do. It's use my chatbot agent. I will show you how it works. First, I'm going to show you how I'm making those embeddings. So I have a trigger which is a normal click trigger. If you go to here, the triggers and this is this is a manual trigger. So you will have a manual trigger. It's very simple. It just click on when you do text workflow and I'm using a HTTP request. It is a post request. I'm doing on my super base to get my files. So it will, it will give you a list of files. So this is the base URL. How it got, how I got the URL base. Go to your project settings. Let's go to API and here's your API base URL and here's your service role. So I'm using my API base URL authentication type is a generic type. I'm using a header auth and I'm putting the service role here as a value. This is just a name. You can put any name X, Y, Z and the service role going to be here because it's going to use as a JSON token to get the data on this particular post request. You need to send some body also. So I'm using send body. It's a JSON type content and I'm using a prefix as empty value. You can have if you have a prefix, you can put your prefix also. I don't have any prefix. It's a em empty storage. So I'm going to put no prefix. Then I'm using another HTTP request. This is for get the file. So if you execute my previous node. So you have a uh, name so it will give you a list of files, which is uh, actually JSON data. I'm using this name here to get my document it's the same same super base uh, base url and then storage v1 object and your bucket name it's a get request so it it also needs a authentication so i'm using same generic authentication type i'm using my super base account service role to to do the request and i'm using a switch statement I'm using two nodes. You can use multiple nodes also. Let's say I'm expecting the file should be either text or PDF. It can be document also. Based on those conditions, you can put your switch. So I'm putting a switch. It it takes a rule. I'm saying the binary data which I'm getting from previous node using binary then data file extension. I'm saying for text file is majorly undefined. So there's no text extension if you can see it's undefined here for PDF file you usually get a date a PDF extension so here it is a PDF extension for document you will have a doc or do or doc ex extension so based on those those cases you can put your rules and make a switch so let's say for text I'm it going to go to one other node which is a merge node I will explain for PDF it goes to extra node which is a accept data from PDF so it's a simple node it takes the PDF and gives you the data those inputs so multiple input multiple inputs let's say PDF text and documents and I'm merging the, the, those data into a single stream so I'm just appending it's a appending it have uh, other options also combined uh, skill query something something 
I'm using append and I'm expecting two inputs text and PDF and go a single output. And I'm using my node as a super base vector store. This you can just get it from here. You do super base. Yeah, super base vector store. So super base vector store, it takes embedding and the documents. I will explain. Super base vector store. So it needs a super base account. So I'm putting the same account, same API and the service role. Then here I'm inserting documents and the table name is document. I generate this table. You, I will put the link in the description. The simple quick start vector extension for Superbase. You just copy this entire query. Go to your Superbase. Go to SQL editor. And here you can put that same embedding and run. It will create your document file. You come to the table editor and you will have these document files. Okay. Then it needs an embedding model. So I'm using my OpenAI embedding model. You can get it from there. It needs an OpenAI account. I'm having an OpenAI account. So I'm putting my key here. You can get your own key just by going to OpenAI code and I'm going to put the link in the description. I'm using a model of an embedding model. I can use the large one, but I don't think so. It's needed here. Then it need a document loader. So in previous input, there's a JSON I'm getting from the merge and I'm using that JSON, which is coming from merge and I'm merging those items. So if I have a data, I'm using data or if I have the text, I'm using text because in PDF file, you will get the data and for normal text file, you will always get just text. You can use the same expression. It will majorly work for everything. Then I'm using a text splitter for making chunks. So what happened? You can't put an entire file. You can actually now, but uh, for the it's a basic strategy to chunk your file into small, small chunks so that uh, it's easy to save and easy to read also. You don't want a big chunk to send to your OpenAI model. So I'm using a chunk size of 500 small chunks and I'm using an overlap of 200. If you don't know overlap, it just use the same uh, numbers. It actually works, majorly works. So what I, what I do, it overlaps something. Let's say, first I'm doing till here. Let's say it's my chunk size or till here then in second chunk if i have only from here to here and i ask about jana it will not have the open AI will not have proper context of jana so what do we do we do overlaps so in next chunk i will not have start from the end of my previous row i will use it from here it overlaps the data so that when OpenAI reads, it have a proper context of what it, what the user is asking. So this is how you you make a, your uh, files to a vector store. Just run this text workflow, and you will have the records here. If I delete these records, just for demonstration purpose. And I'm I, I run my text workflow. I'll show you how what it run every time. Go to your file. Just refresh. You have to refresh one time. And here is the data. So you have a content and you have, have a embedding and the metadata. Metadata is just data from where it started from where it's actually. Now we will work on the chatbot module. So it actually triggered from a simple chat message. You can go to your triggers and this on chat message you can trigger on the chat whenever you ask a question then you have a small open AI agent it's an AI agent so what I do it's a tool agent it tells what tools is available to open AI 
so i'm just writing a small prompt you are a helpful assistant you will use the vector store tool to retrieve relevant information and respond to the query please answer so so please answer the extra word and here's the query so here's the query it actually need three things like what our tool are using what's a chat model and memory so i'm using open air chat model this is my open air account i'm using the same account which i'm using for embedding and chat model i'm using gpt4 mini to ask my queries and there's a memory so i'm using a postgres consistent memory to keep my chat history actually in this chat a chat agent the memory is not persistent so once chat model is off so your your memory will go your entire history will go off history will go i'm using a persistent memory chat uh, i'm using postgres memory so i need to set my postgres account host and other information how i retrieve this information go to your super base go to your project settings go to second go to database no, sorry now go to here go to your connect you can't use the direct connection in free tier i'm using my free tier so i can't use my direct connection i'm using my transaction pool go to view parameters here's a data and you need a password so even if you use my uh, host and all you can't use it okay so here's a host um, postgres database uh, it coming from here database name usually it's postgres only user same user is coming from here your password and your port and it, the rest of the fields are same you need a chat uh, for chat history you need a table name i'm using this table name this table will be created by the by this agent itself so you don't need to worry how you going to create this uh, table and all then it needs a vector store so i'm using tool as a vector store uh, you can get the same thing so i'm just giving a description the, you can put any description here and any knowledge name here i'm just putting as a company based knowledge so what i do it need the vector store i'm using superbase vector store for because we are use saving embeddings in superbase superbase vector store you can get this from here superbase vector store superbase vector store so what previously we are doing we were inserting records now we are retrieving records so you use same superbase account i'm retrieving the records and the table table name is documents so this document table is the same table which you generated here okay and it's use a query name query name is a h function which you you going to perform so this is the match document query and it's the same function which you created here okay for searching the particular document So it's also need a embedding model to get the embeddings. So I'm using same uh, embedding model which we are using down open AI chat model and uh, text open AI account and test embedding three small data model. Vector store also need a chat model to talk with. So I'm using a model and open AI model. I'm using chat GPT four. Mini model, you can use the Turbo Chat GPT three Turbo model also, which I tried it. It works well with both. So, so this is the proper explanation of this workflow. It's a simple one, and this chat agent uh, and this chatbot agent model doesn't change. The major things will be changed in your vector store retrieving model. You can add. extra steps to check whether the file embeddings is already generated or not and uh, those things which i'm going to perform in my next video if you like the video please like it subscribe it and share it thanks you Bye.